Uh, before we begin with all the talks, I will give you a short introduction to Micropass Laser. And uh, as you know, you, you are all familiar with conventional photocoagulation. But to explain the principle, I will shortly go through with you through conventional laser. What happens there, you have got a, a laser beam, which is constantly on. And the laser energy is then absorbed by, by pigmented structures. That is mainly melanin, mainly in a RPE, but also in a choroid. And this causes some of the energies is uh, transferred into heat. And the longer the laser is on, the more heat is built up. And then what you can see in the retina is a loss of tr transparency. It's basically the same as what happens with uh, an egg. The egg white also turns um, into a whitish appearance if you fry it. And but what also happens, the longer your power is on, the more heat can um, uh, dissipate into other structures than the RPE. They, 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 so for example, photoreceptor cells uh, also can be get, get damaged. How does laser treatment work? That is, it's amazing, but it's not really clear how laser um, actually works. And, but one, one hypothesis is that you create a scar and so the photoreceptors are replaced by glia cells. And so you have got less oxygen consumption, less VGF, and therefore less edema, for example. But there are also other biological effects. And it has turned out that especially for macular diseases, you don't need uh, a scarring process going on to get uh, a, a, a treatment response. And that is where now micropulse um, kicks in. There, the laser energy is applied in very short pulses so that you get less collateral damage and you get no visible burns. How is this done? The laser is always turned off, on for a very short period of time and then turned off for a longer time so that there is enough possibility for the tissue to cool down so that you, go, that you don't get any thermal damage of the inner retina. And you, if you see the, the different uh, protocols, there is always you can see the duty cycle. And the duty cycle means it's basically the on time, the, the time the, the laser is on, divided by the complete time of the, the of, uh, on plus off time. So you see here the laser, for example, is, uh, is 100 microseconds on, but it's then turned off for 1,900 microseconds. So it's always a long time off, and this is repeated now uh, multiple times within one, basically one laser shot. Um, one of the problems, so to say, of, of micropass laser is under treatment. Because in, in my experience, I've never seen any, any scarring um, of, of uh, laser spots. But the problem is somehow that you treat too little, that you don't get any effects. And the dense treatment, I think, is one of the keys for a successful micropass treatment. I will come to that in a second. The second point is you, you should titrate your laser, which is possible with a yellow laser because the absorption is, is different from patient to patient. So it's important to adapt your laser energy to a spe specific patient. Third point is you have to focus. If you lose focus in a patient, you treat simply too little and you don't see it. Because, and that's maybe, it can be a problem if you defocus, but it's also maybe a psychological problem for the surgeon doing it, because you don't see anything what happens, you know. And if nothing happens, if you don't see anything, you, you don't believe in, in any treatment therapy in effect. So this is a small study just to illustrate this, this under treatment effect. This was done with another laser. It was an 810 nanometer laser, but I think it ex explains the principle. They did it, uh, 123 patients with EME and compared argon laser treatment versus micropulse versus high density micropulse laser. And you see um, down here that the best results were obtained with the high density micropulse laser with plus 12 um, lines gain, uh, letters gain, it compared to uh, plus four with the argon laser, and minus one if you don't treat enough with the micropulse. And this is, I think this example also explains why it's so important to have a dense coverage, because if you have one, one spot apart from each laser treatment, you have got in a given area 25 spots, but if you have got oh, basically overlapping um, um, laser spots, you've got more than three times more energy applied to a, to a given um, area. 
So that's, that's a short introduction to the principle of microfuzz laser, and um, we can, I think, uh, move then on. Thank you.